Hi, I'm Chef Tom Douglas, and I understand you've requested our triple coconut cream pie recipe for the KCTS Cooks Show. We are so happy to be able to provide it because it's been our best-selling dessert here at the Dahlia Lounge for 18 years. Not only that, but now we serve it at all of our restaurants, no matter which one it is. So uh, we love this pie. Uh, this is the kitchen that is made in every day. Chef Garrett right here is uh, one of a long line of pastry chefs who have embellished on the pie, or have you just left it alone? We love, we left it alone. We left it alone. It's we a fabulous it pie. It's a classic, as they say. And uh, I'm happy to share the recipe. Let's get started on this, huh? Let's get right into it. Uh, really sort of uh, basic pie dough with the addition of some coconut. Uh, starts out with flour and butter. And we'll just go ahead and add that right into the KitchenAid. Uh, butter, you definitely want to be cut into cubes no larger than about an inch so that you get the right texture out of the pie and you're going to want some pieces of butter left over when you're done. Very those, important. Those are only half inch cubes. That's now is that, said, gonna, is that going to ruin the pie today? It won't, it won't ruin the pie. It won't ruin the pie. Okay. I'd like to think that we don't I ruin the pie. I just want to make sure how, you know, I know you're particular. I am very, you know, we, we, okay. we, we had some people do this. What can I say? Uh, we're going to go ahead and add some shredded coconut in here. Uh, we use shredded, not flaked. You want to make sure that you have the shredded coconut. It's going to give you the best texture out of the pie. Now, is that sweetened or unsweetened? This is sweetened. This is sweetened coconut. Sweetened, shredded coconut. Uh, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Always makes things delicious. And uh, I believe right around two teaspoons of sugar is going to go in there. That's one thing we forget in pastry sometimes is that salt adds a balance on your palate. Sweet salt is a perfect combination. Almost all pastry has a little salt content to, to, to even out your pastry. Uh, so once you have all of the dry ingredients and the butter, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and start mixing this very slowly. We want to basically take the butter down to a size that is a little bit smaller than uh, like a green pea. Yeah. Uh, and then at that point, we'll use some ice water to bind it together. And let's get rolling. So I just want to talk real quickly, it's probably the most important thing that will happen while you're making the pie dough uh, is to really make sure that you don't take the butter down too small. If you don't have chunks of butter, you don't have flaky pie. That's right. Um, and he means that seriously. You know, uh, your grandma always said, you know, use your fingers or use a fork and just get it down to its coarse meal. And that's exactly what you can do in a KitchenAid, but you have to be careful because it'll go past like that. And when in doubt, always start everything cold. Uh, the colder your ingredients, the better off you're going to be. Uh, the water that you use, we put ice cubes in it, keep it really cold. The butter, we freeze it. When in doubt, keep it cold. All right. That looks good to me. How about you, Precious? So, yeah, I think it's looking good. We've got small pieces of butter, but not too small, not too big. They're perfect. Uh, and we're going to go in, and you just want to use enough water to bring the dough together. The more water you use, the more a dough is going to shrink. And that's Our recipe good. will actually tell you. He's done it by ice for so much that he can get away with that. But. And you're going to want to mix just until the dough comes together and then shut it off. Okay. That's... So, so you can see that the, that the dough has actually not completely come together into one big mass. We're going to actually go ahead and pull that together the rest of the way with our hands. Lovely. There you go. So, uh, before you go any further, though, yeah. I think it's really helpful. Remember, you said everything cold. Everything so cold. Keep this in the fridge or yep. freezer so yep. that when you're working your pie, it's, the dough stays cold. Everything cold. Yeah. You got it, Tom. So, it's a good idea to take your pie dough after it's been rolled out. Let it chill again every step of the way. Keep chilling all of your ingredients, uh, and you'll be a lot happier with the end result. So, you just want to go ahead and uh, lay it into your chilled pie shell. Now Make, here's, here's a key, Garrett, that I think that people don't do at home very much, which is look how thin that dough is. And a lot of times when you're doing a, a, a blind baked dough, so this is a blind baked dough with the pie beans in it, you know, uh, people use too thick a dough and, or when they're doing an apple pie, like a double top, a double dough pie, double crust, I guess that would be, um, it's too much crust and you never get everything cooked. Here at the Dahlia, uh, we like to crimp it underneath all the way around and make a nice little lip. We want, uh, you want the edge to be a little bit thicker uh, than, than the base of the pie. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of texture on there, nice, nice crunch that you were referring to. We keep it pretty traditional here at the Dahlia and we just, uh, we just give it some crimps. Uh, just like grandma used to do? Just like grandma used just to like do. That? That's how I've always done it. There it's you just... go. So you've got your way and I've got, you know, I've got smaller fingers come on, than come Tom on, come does, on. so I use my knuckles because I think my knuckles are ah, probably about the size of Tom's pinky. 
and you just go all the way around. Now, a cool thing about this crust is that the coconut, because it has a little sugar in it, browns faster than the actual dough does, which is kind of interesting. So you get a toasted coconut flavor inside the pie dough. Very nice. Voila. OK, then show them what it looks like right. when, it, uh, so when it's done. After you've got it formed, again, you want to rechill it. Make sure that it's nice and cold when it goes into the oven. All of your butter, you want it to be nice and firm when it goes in. 400 degrees for about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, and then you're going to want to take uh, the weights out of it. We'll talk about the weights in a second. Uh, take the weights out of it, put it back in for about another 5, 10 minutes, and make sure that everything is brown on the bottom as well, so everything's crispy all the way through. Brown, not blonde. Okay, you want it to look, well, not quite like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... So then you've got this little, we use a coffee filter here, and, yep. le and lentils. Yep. But uh, let's pull that out of there. And so then what you have is uh, something that is very evenly golden brown. Uh, it's not too dark, but you can see, as Tom was referring to the coconut, you can see that the little flecks of coconut get a little bit darker than the crust itself, which... Uh, that brown is flavor. I mean, that's, you're going for some of that flavor. As we say in the biz, golden brown and delicious. G, B, and D. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and make the custard filling for the coconut cream pie. Uh, it's going to start with some milk and to that. We're going to add some uh, the same coconut that we used uh, in the crust. So this uh, is coconut number two. We have coconut crust. Now we've got coconut cream filling, right? That's right. OK. Uh, so to this mixture, we're going to go ahead and add uh, one vanilla bean. We're going to split that and scrape it. Is there a trick to, you have to steep it first to get all those seeds to come out? Or do you like to scrape the seeds and then put the, the skin in? Uh, I think everybody has a little bit of their own preference. Uh, the pods, you always want to steep. Uh, I like to take the seeds out and put the seeds in with the eggs. Uh, I think you break the seeds up a little bit. All right, so the steeping's going to happen in this pastry cream here. All right, so that goes in there. The seeds in the bowl. We're stuck. We're going to take this. Everything goes onto the stove. You want to bring it up to the boil. Uh, you want to really get some of that flavor from the coconut into the milk and the vanilla. Uh, let it all kind of hang out for a little bit, get tasty. Uh, so from there, once you have brought uh, your milk mixture up to a boil, uh, in the bowl that we have the vanilla, you're going to want to crack the eggs. Now we're going to set this off to the side once it comes to a boil? We are going to set it off to yeah. the side. All right. It doesn't uh, stay on the burner. No, no, no. You don't yeah. want to continue to cook it. Once your eggs go in, we're going to go ahead and add uh, the flour. When I was down in San Diego this last weekend, stacks. I went by a market with stacks of vanilla beans. It must be $10,000 worth of vanilla beans. It was just unbelievable. It's it like is. I wanted to bow down to the vanilla bean. <laughs> As well you should. So once you have everything in there, sugar, flour, eggs, vanilla, uh, just give it a good whisk. Make sure that there's no lumps. Uh, really important, make sure that you really don't have any lumps because this is not something that we're going to actually strain out when we're done. We want to leave the coconut in there. So if you have lumps going in, you're going to have lumps coming out. Yeah, the only thing we're going to take out of this is those vanilla bean pods. That's right. Voila. Uh, so once this has come to the boil, everything's really nice and hot, mm -hmm. uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to do what we call tempering. Uh, you don't want to add eggs to this mixture. You're going to end up with scrambled eggs. Right. Delicious, wrong time of day. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this mixture and just add a touch just to very gently warm up the eggs so that when we go back in here, everything's silky and delicious. So now that we have everything into the pot, we are going to put this back on the stove and cook this for about uh, anywhere between six to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that it comes up to a boil so that we get the, the, the starch out of the flour. Uh, and then cook it till it's really nice and thick. On a real kind of medium to low heat, though, because yes. it'll scorch in a heartbeat. So yep. just keep, you know, make sure you stir it once in a while, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then this is where you end up. You know, once you chill it, uh, you end up with a nice thick pastry cream. Once your filling has been uh, sufficiently cooled, which you want it to be very cold when it goes into the pie. It's taking a lot of time to make it crispy. You take warm filling, crispy You'll gone. You'll sog it right crispy out. Crispy gone. Yeah. 
See, those are little techniques. You think you've made these classic pies a million times, but when you make them over and over and over again, and you, you start to develop little techniques that make one pie better than the next pie. And that's just a classic one right there. Cold filling into a, a uh, blind cooked crust helps keep the crust crispy. Another technique that we don't use here, but you could brush that crust with a little chocolate or white chocolate, and that'll give you a layer between the filling and the crust, and it helps for a very crispy crust. That's, uh, that's what we do for the uh, lemon meringue tarts. Yeah. Well, it's important in cooking, taste and texture and temperature, because you don't want to have all mush. You want to have some crunch in your pie, right? You, you, you don't want it to be, your cream is going to be soft, your pastry cream is soft. That's right. So you need some crunch. And crunchy is the most exciting of texture. That's right. So now that we have filled the pie, uh, you want to be generous with the filling. No reason to short them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we go literally right up to the top of the pie crust. So you can either do this by hand or in a KitchenAid. No? No? Not by hand? KitchenAid. No. Oh, come on. Well, I say that because now if you're making whipped cream for like a, a shortcake or something like that where you want a soft whip, absolutely do it by hand. It's fun. But this pie, I think, is best with a real firm whipped cream. And uh, you'd be sweating buckets by the time you're gone, done. Getting Some through. of us would be. That's right. <laughs> us out of shape ones. I, I agree, though. Yeah. Uh, stiff whipped cream is definitely best for Let's this see, pie. Who was in the hospital last? Oh, oh, you. Oh, man. Who's going to be next? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, in the KitchenAid, you want to add uh, heavy whipping cream, no less than 40% fat, uh, and a little bit of vanilla extract, and a uh, touch of sugar. Right. I like, again, salt comes up. A little pinch of salt, I feel, brings out the flavor of the vanilla. Uh, and cream itself does have a wonderful flavor. And, you know, a little salt goes a long way. Right. So and this is a great time to support uh, Washington Farms, your local farmer, because down at the creamery in the Pike Place Market, they carry local, really heavy cream, some up to 70%. So once your cream is whipped very nice and stiff, uh, we're gonna go ahead and top this baby up. So we're going for about an inch, inch and a half topping. Um, at the most, too. You don't, you don't want to overwhelm your, your pastry cream with too much cream. In an odd way, you know what happens? You get too much fat in your mouth. You know, the cream, 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 heavy, heavy yeah. fat. So you want to be able to taste the intricacies of the flavor. Yeah. Yeah. You end up getting a skin inside your mouth. That's right. Oh. All right. So the finishing touches. Well, here comes our triple threat. This is our triple coconut part. And a really fun part <laughs> is to do this white chocolate. Now, I do this right sometimes, but not all the time, so yeah, I'm going to try let's, it. Let's see what you get. Now, this is a 10-pound block of white chocolate. 11. 11-pound block of white chocolate. Don't short me. And uh, you could do it with, a, if you have a smaller chunk, you can buy it in bulk now at the grocery store. If you have a small chunk, just use a peeler, like your potato peeler, and just make some uh, little wedges. If you have a big chunk and you can do it, just kind of go like this and pull your knife against it. That's what you end up with. We will go through probably 44 pounds in a week, maybe. There you go. It's a lot of chocolate curls right there. So now let's beautify. Uh, the third portion of coconut, uh, and this is where a different coconut comes into play. Uh, we've already introduced a good deal of sugar to the pie, and at this point, we still have a little bit more going on top, so the coconut now, we're gonna use an unsweetened coconut. Uh, and this is going to be a larger flake coconut mm -hmm. rather than the shredded. Uh, and this is widely available. Yeah, I find it hard to find in the grocery aisle, but in the bulk food department is yeah. a good place to find yep. this coconut. Yep. So you can see it's big chips and uh, it's been roasted in the oven until you get a little brown tinge on the edge. And it looks really beautiful when you have the, the, the brown tinge on the edge, but a little bit blonder on the rest of the coconut. Yep. Just looks really nice. So a little bit on top, and earlier we were talking about texture, and this is just another really wonderful texture, crunchy, we love. And then the finish. It's these big, beautiful white chocolate curls. And you want to give them fluff, because that's going to increase the volume, and it's just going to be the, the thing that sends it over the top. If your white chocolate is tempered or a little bit softer, you'll make thicker curls. Yep. The colder it is, the thinner the curl. 
So it really kind of depends. I've seen some people actually put just chunks of white chocolate sticking out the top of this pie before. That's it. That That's is a triple coconut cream pie. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Tom. Uh, many, many pies over the 18 years. If you want to make it at home, now you have the recipe and you have the technique. If you don't, if you're feeling lazy, come see me at the Dahlia Lounge. There you go, Tom. Not bad, Precious. Thank you, thank you. Rhapsody.